This is a calculus concept uh, exam review, concepts 6 through 10. Starting with number uh, concept number 6, we're supposed to find the limit if it exists. The limit's going to infinity. We should notice that the denominator has a larger degree, x cubed. When the limit goes to infinity and the denominator has a larger degree, that limit is going to be 0. On number 2, Notice that the degrees are the same. We have an x squared and an x squared. The limit's going to negative infinity. In this case, we focus on the leading coefficients. The fact that it's going to negative infinity won't matter because if you square a negative number, you get a positive. So here we're going to be looking at a positive over a positive, but times a negative. Negative over negative is a positive. So we're going to be looking at 5 eighths for a limit there as we head towards negative infinity. And again, the negative is insignificant because we're squaring it. Squaring a negative gives us a positive. Negative divided by negative is positive in this case. This third one on this concept six, limits going to negative two from the left. So I need to think of a number left of negative two. That'd be like negative 2.00001. If I take negative 2.001 and add it to 2, I'm going to get a very small negative number. 1 divided by a small negative number will be a very large negative number. So this is going to head towards negative infinity. That is concept 6. Concept 7, we're asked to find the equation for the tangent line to the curve at the given point. So for number four, anytime I'm asked for an equation of a line, I realize I need a slope and I need a point. They provided me with half the point. They gave me the x value is two. I need to go find the y value. Well, the y value is just what do I get when I plug two in for x? I'm going to get four minus two in this case, or two. So it's the point two, two. Now to find the slope. I can find the slope with the derivative. So I'll find the derivative of f to be 2x minus 1. And then at the x value of 2, I get a value of 2 times 2, which is 4 minus 1, or 3. So I have a slope of 3 and a point of 2 comma 2. So if my slope is 3, I have y equals 3x plus b. If I put 2 comma 2 in, I get 2 equals 6 plus b. And I can see pretty quickly that b is going to be negative 4. So my equation with a slope of 3 and a y-intercept of negative 4, my equation should be y equals 3x minus 4. For number five, same process. I just need to think of f of x as a little slightly different form here. Seven over x is the same as seven x to the negative one power, and then minus two. Again, I need to find a slope and a point. They gave me the whole point this time, three comma one third. I just need to go find the slope. Again, I can find the slope using the derivative. So the derivative of 7x to the negative 1 minus 2. Let's see, if I take negative 1 times 7, that's negative 7. And if I reduce the power by 1, that'll be a negative 2. Or I can put that on the bottom as an x squared. The derivative of the constant negative 2 is just 0. So when I plug in my x value at the point to find out the slope of the tangent line at that point, I'm actually plugging in 3 here. I want to show that I'm plugging in 3 not just x. I'm going to get negative 7 over 9. So I need to go find that b value again. So I've got y is equal to negative 7 ninths x plus some b value. y is 1 third when x is 3. This is a 7 ninths times 3 plus b. This uh, 3 and the 9 will just reduce, so 1 third is equal to um, negative 7 thirds plus b. 
So B is the same as 8 thirds when I add 7 thirds to both sides. So I have a slope of negative 7 ninths. I have a y-intercept of 8 thirds. I can go ahead and write my equation for the final answer. Y is equal to negative 7 ninths x plus 8 thirds. And that's it. Concept 8, we're just finding derivative uh, at the indicated point for number 6. So number 6, find the derivative at the indicated point. The first thing we need to do is find the derivative of f. So f prime of x, negative 5 will zero out. The derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x. So the derivative at negative 4, f prime of negative 4 is negative 2 times negative 4 or positive 8. So number 6, the derivative at that point, the x value of negative 4 is 8. Number 7 just wants the derivative of f. Well, the derivative of f is 2x and then the negative 7 was 0 out, so it's just plain old 2x. So that one didn't really, didn't really challenge us much. Concept 9, higher order derivatives. On number 8, they want the second derivative of y equals uh, 3 sine x. So, the first derivative. The derivative of 3 sine x would be 3 cosine x. And then the second derivative is just the derivative of that, which is the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So 3 times negative sine would be negative 3 sine x. So there's our second derivative. Number 9, we need to find the fourth derivative of the function. So let's go find the first derivative. 2 times 6 is 12x to the fifth minus 6 times 4 is 24 x to the third plus 6 times 2 is 12 x so there's our first derivative second derivative now it's just the derivative of what we have here 5 times uh, 12 is 60 x to the fourth minus 3 times 24 is 72 x squared plus the derivative of 12x is just 12. Third derivative coming up. 4 times um, 60 is 240 x to the third. Always reduce the power 1. Minus 2 times 72 is 144 x and then the derivative of the constant 12 is 0. I only want to write this other one once. I'm going to write it over here by the answer blank. When we do derivatives, we use one tick mark for the first derivative, two for the second derivative, and three for the third. And then after that, we just start writing the, the number of derivative in a little uh, parenthesis. So this is the fourth derivative. We use the parenthesis so it doesn't look like a power. So I take 3 times 240 is 720. Reduce the power by 1 to squared. And the derivative of uh, negative 144x is just negative 144. So here are my two solutions for 8 and for 9. Okay, number 10, just find an equation of the tangent line. Again, we're finding an equation of a line, and any time we're trying to find an equation of a line, we need to find a slope and a point. They gave us part of the point. The x value is 4. If we plug that in, 4 squared is 16 plus 4 is 20, so the y value is 20. If we can find a slope, we can write our equation. We can find the slope with the derivative. The derivative of y is 2x. So at the point where x is 4, 
the derivative is 8, meaning the slope of the tangent line is 8. So now I have y is equal to 8x plus some unknown intercept b. Put in 20 for y and 4 for x and solve for b. 20 equals 32 plus b. b is going to be negative 12. So we'll go ahead and write that answer. y is equal to 8x minus 12. And then we'll go ahead and do number 11. Find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of y at the point 16 comma 7. So basically the same problem. We need a slope and a point. They provided all of the point this time. So to find the slope, we're going to do a derivative. But to do the derivative, we might want to think of y as 4x to the 1 half minus x plus 7. That way we can see it in polynomial form and calculate the derivative. It may be easier. So y prime is equal to half of 4 is 2. And then x to the negative 1 half is the same as over root x minus the derivative of x is 1 and the derivative of the constant 7 is 0. So here's my derivative. At the point where x is 16, we get 2 over root 16 minus 1. Let's clean that up. 2 over root 16 minus 1. Well, root 16 is 4. 2 over 4 is a half. And a half minus 1 is negative a half. So I have a slope. So I know y equals negative 1 half x plus some unknown intercept b. I know that y is 16 when x is 7. Oops, I got that backwards, thank goodness, because I didn't want to really want to do those fractions. I know that y is 7 when x is 16. So half of 16 is 8, so 7 equals negative 8 plus b. b is going to be 15. So I have my slope of negative a half, I have my intercept of 15. So y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 15. I have my two solutions. That's it for this exam.